Okay, guys. So we'll quickly revise all the key concepts that we have learned so far. So if you remember the Dutch flag problem, okay. It was uh, basically a very simple question that if you have been given an array with a lot of elements, okay, and uh, you have been, let's say, picked one particular pivot element, and you have to arrange the array such that all the elements smaller than the pivot should come on one side, all the elements greater should come on the other side, and all the elements which are equal to it should be, let's say, in the middle, right? Now, um, these kind of questions would repeat themselves. Um, the key importance that you need to give here is that if this entire thing was sorted, okay, then this would have been the scenario. Numbers would have been increasing, okay, and wherever pivot would have been, it would have satisfied this particular scenario, okay. So let's say that uh, you get a question, um, and it depends on the company you are sitting for or the particular uh, brooch that you're taking. Let's say you are not able to solve this problem with the very perfect approach, with the best complexity. Just sort this entire scenario out, okay? Now, what would happen there is um, you have the complexity for sorting as n log n, right? So what would happen is that you would take a little extra, let's say, time for solving this particular problem then compared to the most optimal approach. The thing here is that if you do that, there's a good chance that at least 50% of the problems, okay, would at least be 50% of the question or the test set, as you say, would be solved, okay? There's a good chance if the company is actually looking for optimized uh, solutions and it does happen, uh, so these will run out of time. Okay, that is because the size here would be too huge and the restrictions they would have kept would be a little further. But the thing is, at least this much would be working. Okay, and usually these uh, platforms have a point based system, right? So test case one gives you 10 points, test case two gives you 15 points, then 20, then 30, and then another, let's say 20 or 35. Okay, so these kind of point system would be there. So it's better to, if you don't, let's say, remember such a solution, you need to clearly think what the question says. Even sorting is a solution to this, not the most optimal one, obviously, but it is still a solution to it, okay? And sorting, and when I'm saying n log n, please don't do bubble sort. Bubble sort is never the answer to anything, okay? Like even if you have to do something, use any other sort, don't use bubble sort, because the complexity here would go n squared, okay? That is one of the approaches that uh, you, put the smallest element here and then you keep looking for the second smallest element and you put it here and so on, right? So don't do that particular approach. Uh, this sort of, I'm talking about these sorting algorithms like insert or what sort, there you will at least get this 50% marks. Now this is something which is not necessarily from the competitive programming perspective, but the thing is towards the end of the day, we need to crack that coding round, right? So this is uh, one thing that if you don't know an approach, try to figure out how would you be able to get something. Now, why is this taking more uh, efforts than I need to? The reason is, uh, let's say I have the number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Okay, let's say this is the scenario. And uh, my pivot element is five. The thing is, if I sort this thing, I will have it like this. Right, this would be the scenario. And this is a correct scenario, not an issue. But the thing is that I have put a lot of computation in arranging these numbers in order as well, which even if let's say would have been like this, this particular situation would have satisfied, right? So that is the key thing that we need to understand here is that because sorting does more than what we require, the complexity for sorting is higher than the optimal solution, right? Now I know that optimal solution that you guys have already studied is basically to divide uh, the array into four uh, partition and see this partition approach is something that you will see very, very often in array problems. So if you have to divide into sorted or unsorted, even the quick sort logic, if you understand, it is based on the similar approach that uh, the pivot element is let's say the part of sorted, everything else is unsorted and you then try to fix the next element, just put one particular element at its side position and everything else can jumble around. 
but then you keep adding elements from the unsorted part to the sorted part and towards the end everything is sorted right so in this particular approach as well um i will put all the elements smaller than pivot in one side greater on the other side and equal to along with the pivot itself right other than that there are question numbers so i'm assuming that you already know the solution if not just uh, look the first problem up you will uh, understand what i'm basically trying to say what it uh, basically gives is that okay let's say you have pivot element 2 and you have an element 3 here and you have let's say or let's say this be 5 you have element 3 1 and 2 here you have 7 and 8 here and let's say there are two unsorted items here question marks okay so if this thing comes out to be 3 Okay, which is smaller than this, you just have to put this particular thing here, okay, and so on. So the solution you already have along with the code. The only thing I wanted to share with you is that this is why that is not the most optimal approach. Now let's say this is a question that actually came to you in the interview, okay, and let's say you are not able to get to the right solution. You are not able to explain the solution. If you explain that sorting is a non optimal solution and that is because we are putting this extra effort and if we can reduce this particular effort which you also do in quick sort that is as close to the correct answer as you can get without giving the right answer and the reason why i'm trying to explain that is for a lot of problems it's not possible to get the right answer then and there so if you learn this process okay of thinking in a tactical way that is more helpful to you because that is what the companies look for instead of always getting the right answer because your approach will decide whether you will reach to the right answers for difficult questions or not okay so this is one learning that you can take for let's say similar type of questions coming in the coding round or let's say to be asked in the interview rounds okay uh, the next three questions are a bit uh, mix of basically the same version of questions so i'll try to explain it to you here only so basically what we have is that we had to program this plus 1 function in which this particular number 129 is represented in form of an array as 1 comma 2 comma 9 and if i add 1 it should be 130 so the output should be 1 comma 3 comma 0 right now the approach is pretty simple that if you add 1 you just have to check if the first digit it converts into 10 if it does then just replace it by 0 add 1 to the next element and keep it so on okay just like the carry forward but uh, and this is a very simple logic the only problem you might have is a little bit with programming but even that is very simple given time okay now let's say that instead of plus 1 i do a plus 5 or a plus 6 or basically a plus n where n is less than 10 would the approach remain the same no because then it will be not 10 it will be something more than that and then you'll have to extract the unit digit and keep adding the number ahead okay the thing which i want to show you here in that particular scenario is let's say i have a very long number okay and the thing is if i add let's say 6 okay this particular 6 here it added up it goes to 15 if it is greater than uh, 9 i can directly check that uh, or let's say divide it by 10 and see if the integer version of that is zero or not you know how to do this i think all of you would have uh, done the reversal of a number or uh, in that kind of a program so you know how to check if the number is greater than 10 and then extract the unit digit but if you see properly after this particular point regardless of if i add plus 4 plus 3 plus 7 plus 9 whatever i add okay after the unit digit everything else regardless of if it is 19 or if it is 11 only one will carry forward right and if, if only one is carrying forward then basically it is this same problem except for the unit digit right so here what you have to see is that at times you will get questions in which a question will be this big and this much you already know the solution to okay you just have to figure out how to eliminate this one so what you can do is that instead of a single loop solving this entire problem if it is you, let's say you are finding it difficult for some reason you can just do it for unit digit once and then for all the other digits just like you did for this particular program okay again here also the approach is that if let's say by any chance you are not able to solve a problem entirely break it into parts you will see related or similar or easier questions if you do it a little bit more okay 
So this is uh, just a set of suggestions and that is what all the theoretical concepts will be, is that as we move ahead, the kind of problems that you will get will get a little more complicated. But if you know how to approach these questions, and this is what the key thing is, because in the, in the competitive programming scenarios, you will get a situation like, okay, two people or let's say 20 people are there in a resort and these are three floors and there are only some six X number of room and uh, couples have to get rooms, let's say next to each other, the family has to room, uh, get a room next to each other. The addition of those numbers should be this, the last digit should be the same so that the floor is the same. So you will get this particular same question in terms of wordings. Okay, and that is why when you convert these problems in this particular way, you will see that there are certain aspects which you might know already. If you practice even the 30, 50 questions that we will do here, you will be able to relate at least to 50 to 60% of almost every problem that you will get. It is that rest of the 30 to 40% that you have to think about. Okay, and if you understand this much, getting from here to here is much easier than solving the entire big problem. That is why we have so many paradigms in computer science which tries to break the problem divide it one by one do it recursively and all of those things okay now this is just a review just to show you that the problems may appear different a little bit but they are not actually entirely different they are very close related if you understand why you are doing and when you are doing it you will be able to crack those problems so i hope that this has given you a very quick and brief review of the things that you have studied so far we will uh, do similar kind of a video for conceptualizing the next four or five problems as well.